of a blogger. <laughs> I'm just starting. And okay. then, uh, I want to know your story. My uh, grandfather. Uh, how did you meet uh, my grandpa? Well, we met actually before 1957 uh, in Angeles City near Clark Air Base in the Philippines. I knew him as a young man and uh, I knew him as Pepe. Pepe. And uh, we were very good friends, but we were both not Christians when we first met. You met my uh, Lolo Pepe when you're not a Christian. And then yeah, I was you, not yet saved. Oh, you did uh, everything. <laughs> my Lolo drinks uh, and uh, always uh, gambling when uh, he's not a Christian. That's right. right? Uh, <laughs> one of the things that uh, uh, Pepe had a problem with uh, gambling and also uh, some problem with the drinking alcohol. I like to know the details how you uh, met my Lolo. You're, you're in the one company, you're in the one uh, watching station or something? It's hard to explain about uh, how we met. Yeah. <laughs> but um, they were living in the Mercado compound. Oh. And, uh, and I was also familiar with the Mer Mercado compound. That's why. And I knew uh, his his uncle was the chief of police in Anglia City. Oh, that connects the story. Yeah, and so he also was a little bit not so not so good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they were always uh, upset with Pepe when he would come home with little or no money. Oh. And he money. had that addiction, of the, especially the gambling. That's how we knew each other before. And then you, you became a Christian, right? Well, the way that I became a Christian, even though I knew Pepe and uh, knew those in the compound, I was also, even though my life was messed up, I was not happy with my life. So I was going that Hold for one year, I went to the Roman Catholic Church by myself, and I would go in and I would pray. And I was asking the Lord to change my life. I was not happy with my life, but I didn't know how I could change my life. That was one of the things that I was praying, that the Lord would change my life. And the other thing was, I wanted to know if there was any way that I could know God for sure before I die, that I would know that I could go to heaven. I didn't know much about the Bible, but I did believe in God, I believed in heaven, and I knew and believed that there was a hell. And that's what scared me because I was pretty sure that I was going to go to hell because of the way that I live. Lifestyle. So for one year, I went to the church every day, except one day for a whole year. Except one day? Oh. And, uh, Catholic church, right? Yes, and the Lord did not change my life because I didn't have the right direction. Uh, I didn't know the Bible. And, uh, the Catholic Church taught that you cannot know that in this life. And so there was no hope for me in the Catholic Church or the Catholic relief. So during that year, twice I almost lost my life. I was a telephone lineman and many times we would go out into the... Electrical wires. Well, uh, telephone wires different. From electric, it's it's, yeah. it's, it's a but low so, voltage. Sometimes when you fix the telephone wires, there's electric yeah, <laughs> around like it. Yeah, cables. Yeah, cables. Job required that I would sometimes go out and do special jobs off of the base, and there would be uh, snakes and those kinds oh, of things. And so, uh, on a job, one of the jobs, I was almost bitten by a Philippine cobra. And if I would have been bitten because we were so far from the base, 
that I probably would have died. So, and then immediately after this snake nearly bit my hand, a big spider attacked me. And uh, it was hot, I had no shirt, and it was coming at my chest. And I stepped aside, and the spider went on the ground, and I killed the spider. So, just that quickly, I could have lost my life. Because of a snake, right? And I, I really, really, uh, the Lord was really behind all of this, but at that time, being an unbeliever, I did not know what God was doing. That's what we call the grace of God, unmerited, undeserved favor. I didn't deserve the favor and love of Christ. Then on another occasion, we had big trucks that we drove, and I was licensed, and I was the one that usually would be the driver. One day, we were going on a coffee break, merienda, and a morning snack. We were going out in a remote place to have uh, the merienda. And uh, one of the guys in my truck dared me that I couldn't go around this curve 60 miles an hour. <laughs> and I said, I can do that. But I said, we won't make it. But I said, we're gonna do it anyway. <laughs> And so we, we hit that curve, it was like, like an L shape. And uh, we slid off of the road, went out into the Kogan grass and the truck <laughs> tipped way up so far that I had Kogan grass around the side view mirror in this big truck, but it did not go over. We came this way and that way and it settled out. And I had crew in the back and they were holding on to the winch line of our cable line of uh, our boom. And uh, so I didn't lose any of my crew, but I could have killed all of us. <laughs> anyway, uh, we went and had our merienda. Everybody's quiet because uh, it scared everyone, but especially me. <laughs> so as the year went by, I noticed in one of my crew members that he was different. His language was different. He had a bad language, as I did. And his way of working was he was not really a good worker, but he was working really well. And he was not using the bad language. And uh, something happened to him, I said, in my heart. And I said, whatever happened to that guy, uh, that's what I need, something that inside of me. I need some change in here, in my heart. And every, every night I would go off of the base and I would do bad things. And uh, so, but when I was going off of the base, I noticed over in Balibago, there's a water tower. And uh, that water tower was a place where they were having open air evangelistic meetings. I didn't know what those meetings were. I had no idea about evangelism or the word being saved. <clears throat> they didn't talk about being uh, saved. I was curious about those meetings. Now you know as a Filipino that it's very common to have open air meetings. You have dances and you have bingos and you have the rooster fights, the cock yeah. fights, and, and uh, what's the big deal? Well, somehow the Lord was saying something about those meetings that really caused me to be uh, interested. So the guy that I was on my crew, <clears throat> he invited me to those meetings. And it was rainy season. It was a bad time to have open air meetings, but so, he asked me to go to the meeting. I said, uh, do they talk about being saved? Because my mother told me, don't go to a church that talks about being saved. They're fanatical. You want to stay away from those people. Anyway, I asked him if they talked about being saved. And he said, well, why don't you come and see? And so I said, okay, I will go and uh, I will see. Well, it rained that night, so they moved into a big Spanish house. 
and uh, the hacienda of uh, some people, but they had moved away to another place, so the building was empty. So uh, <clears throat> there was an evangelist that came from Mandaluyong in Metro Manila and brought a, a team with him, a man that played uh, the violin and uh, others that sang Christian special songs. And uh, then uh, he got up and he, he was preaching out of the Bible. And I believe that the Bible was God's word. And that was something that was a good thing for me. So when uh, he got up and was preaching the Bible, he was whacking the Bible and stomping his feet and the pictures were falling off of the walls and banging on the floor. And uh, he was a fiery preacher. And he was preaching from his heart. And he said, if you don't get saved, you'll go to hell. And then he told the way you need the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior. You need to repent of your sin, get your life straightened out and all the he was a Filipino? He was an American, American missionary. missionary. And so uh, it was like he was preaching at me. Oh, yeah. I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. And if I don't get saved, I'm going to go to hell. And so after the, he preached and they gave an invitation, a, a plea for people that needed to come to Christ to come forward and they would help with the Bible and show the way of salvation out of the Bible, God's Word. And so I went forward and they pointed out how to be saved. Yeah. But I said, I now understand a question that I had had for over a year. And uh, now I have the answer. He said, you'd like to trust Christ as your Savior now? I said, I want to do this in the privacy of my room and I meant it with all my heart and uh, by the time I the meeting was over the rain had stopped went back to my room my roommate was not there turned out the light and got by my bed and cried out through the windows to invite Jesus Christ into my life to be my Savior and Lord and I said to the Lord whatever's left of my life I want you to have it I did not know you got saved what that, that would mean, but I got saved there and I stayed on my knees praising God. And, and uh, for that whole year, I was not able to sleep that night. Oh, okay. I fell asleep on my knees. I woke up about an hour later and my knees were numb oh. and I couldn't stand up. So I had to grab my bunk and pull myself up and oh. fell on my bed in the first time in a year. I slept very, very oh well. Peace of mind, right? Peace. Because I had the peace of God. Peace of mind, yeah. And I knew that I was forgiven. And I knew that Amen. the Lord had come into my life. To cut the story short, Pastor, uh, God saved. And then uh, after uh, your tour in the Navy, you came back. You want to know how I met yeah. your grandfather? Yeah, they said that you came back. Yeah. Seconds or less. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I've uh, been familiar and friends. Then I shared the gospel with him. And uh, that night, he, by himself, trusted Christ to be his Savior. And then he came to church. And he when, went when is that, Pastor? Uh, 1957. When, I, I mean, think. you got saved and then you immediately uh, talked to my... Uh, your grandpa? grandfather. Oh, immediately. Yes, I was only a new Christian myself. Uh, that year also, that, that week or Yeah, something? well, it was maybe year. two weeks. Uh, two weeks? Yeah. Oh, then he uh, he went forward. I did not know that he had trusted Christ. He didn't tell me. And he went forward that, uh, that Sunday and made a public profession. It was a long time later <clears throat> that I found out that he had trusted Christ the day that I witnessed to him. I thought he got saved when he went forward. No, he was already saved and he went forward. And so um, 
when he got saved, he shared with your grandma that how he got saved, and your grandma became very angry. And they were up in the sala of the house of uh, the Mercados when he shared his testimony, and she became very angry uh, that he had uh, he was leaving the Catholic Church, and that made her angry because she was a very strong Catholic. You're and with him. You're with him that time when my grandma. I was not there. No. Oh. She came, she ran out of the room, out of the steps. There were several steps to the sala. And at the bottom of the steps, there was a mango seat. And she slipped on the mango seat and tumbled oh. and uh, hurt herself real bad and started bleeding because she was about six months pregnant. Ah. She was carrying a baby and immediately had to go to the hospital <clears throat> and gave uh, birth to the baby. And the baby died about two two hours after birth. My pastor, who was a tech sergeant in the Air Force, went to the hospital and led your grandma to Christ. She also embraced the gospel and got saved. Oh, that's the story. Yes. Yeah. And so now we are all saved. And uh, <clears throat> the next step, of course, is what we were talking about in the service. The first step of obedience is to be baptized to demonstrate that you're already saved <clears throat> and so your Lolo and Lola and myself and I think like six others were baptized and uh, became members of then Balebago Baptist Church and they, they changed the name to Mountain View Bible Baptist oh, Church Yes, because they changed the location where we were meeting in that old building. That was our meeting place. And then, uh, yeah, and it became a Bible Baptist church. Now we know the story. <laughs> yeah. Your, your grandpa, your Lola, Lolo, he uh, went to the seminary. The Lord called him into the ministry. And the Lord, eventually, I went back to the States. And then a year later, I re-enlisted, went into the Navy. Navy. And it was a year, almost a year after going into the Navy that the Lord called me to the ministry. So your Lola was in the in seminary there. I was in uh, Bible school seminary studying, training for the ministry. Oh, yeah. Ten years later, I came back to the Philippines as a missionary. I went up to Clarkfield area and the Bible, the Southern Baptists had already started a big church and they also had a building. And your Lolo had training in the Southern Baptist Seminary in Baguio. You have a communication with my grandpa with the writing? No, or? none. Uh, none? None. We had not seen or How can or you know your address or something when you came no, back? nothing. But I went up there with a, a missionary friend, took me up there to see if I could meet him again. We went to the Clarkfield Baptist Church, and before I could even inquire about your Lolo, he walked in the door, and we had a nice reunion. Reunion after 10 yeah. years, so... Yeah. yeah. Anyway, eventually uh, the Lord led your Lolo to uh, uh, and I together and we worked to establish the church in Angeli City. And uh, your Lolo and Lola, my first wife and I, and Rebecca was our only child and then Susanna was born while we were, I know she was born before that. Our third child was born while we were in Hanley City. And uh, I developed a health issue in my back and I was not able, I had to leave the Philippines. And I and, uh, was not able to return to the Philippines immediately. So uh, I 
went to Australia to do ministry in Australia oh, for went to Australia. about eight years. <laughs> then the Lord led me eight back. Eight years, eight years, Pastor. Yes, and then oh. the Lord led me back to Philippines. the Philippines. And, uh, and the Lord led me to start a ministry in Metro Manila. And then while in Metro Manila, I also got reacquainted with uh, your Lolo and Lola. And uh, anyway. Uh, in Visayas, uh, what's the story about Visayas? They, your Lolo and Lola also came and and before going to Angelis, they uh, worked with us in a town called Bai Bai Lacy. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, and so then after that, we went up to Angelis City and uh, worked there to establish a church. Oh, that's why that's yeah. the story of you and, uh, and my grandpa. Uh, yes. It's a good story. Uh, we thought that uh, you, you're, you are already a Christian when you met my grandpa. <laughs> uh, no. No, I was not. Yeah. But, uh, Even before you are not a Christian, you met my grandpa. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, he knew, I knew him. And that's how when uh, your Lola miscarried and had the pre premature baby, that there was no one that gave their condolences from the family. The Mercados were also angry that your Lolo and Lola have become Christian and left the Catholic Church. And uh, so that's when we had just the three of us to bury the little baby. And, uh, And then uh, you always go to the Philippines every now and then, right? Uh, when, after the last time I was in the Philippines was in 2018. Oh, 2018? And I preached at Open Door Baptist as one of the places where oh, I preached yeah. while on a short, just a short visit back in 2018. <laughs> but we started a church in Metro Manila. And that was my last uh, church uh, ministry. You witnessed my Lolo in, in his room or, or in the church? Uh, in, in his, in his uh, quarters? Uh, in the compound. Ah, in the compound in of Mercado. Mercado compound. Oh, okay. Even my Lolo, I know that's uh, uh, heard the message? No, she did not. Oh. She... It was just the two of us. <laughs> okay. And we also. Uh, after uh, your Lolo and I were saved, we also had Bible studies in the compound there and invited. And that's where actually uh, we started the Angeles Fundamental Baptist Church was in right there at the Mercado uh, compound. That's where the church started, which now became Open Door Baptist. The story, Pastor. Huh? We're grateful that uh, you witnessed to uh, uh, God uh, give you the courage and uh, you're being a channel for my role. Yeah. And, and now we're grateful that uh, uh, we met you <laughs> again. Yes. It, uh, I am so, so uh, blessed to have you all here. I love you all very very special to me that you would come and surprise me and, and uh, the expense and time and everything I am just uh, you have no clue that uh, we're coming right no I did not <laughs> no I did not yeah. but you remember all of the brothers and sisters uh, <laughs> I remember all of the brothers and sisters uh, yeah. the, uh, I heard you about that uh, telling their names Lisa and yes, <laughs> I did not know that uh, Lisa had, uh, ah. that was the first wedding that we had in the church was Leo and, Le and Lisa. Oh, you're there? Yes. That was the first wedding. I did not know she was now widowed. That's a good story, Pastor. Thank you for the time. And then, uh, uh, 
thank you, Paul, for the opportunity to yeah, share yeah. with you. Yes, that's a good story, Pastor. Thank you very much. And uh, Mrs. Anglia, what can you say about uh, your husband, oh. uh, Pastor? Mercy. <laughs> <laughs> The verse today of how beautiful are the feet of those who go to preach the gospel. So I was thinking of his beautiful feet who born in two steps so mightily through the years. And he's a nice guy. That's <laughs> great. And I have nothing more to say. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, enjoy your meal. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Thank you.